So Elimination Chamber is this Sunday live on the WWE Network. Sunday night, yes. And is this really going to be the last WWE pay-per-view shown on the WWE Network for U.S. customers? I think it is, isn't it? Seven years and now, starting next month, it's going to be on Peacock. Weird. Uh, but let's be clear. We look ahead to Elimination Chamber on Sunday I mean, if you're a fan of the Elimination Chamber match concept, you know, maybe maybe you're hoping that these matches will really deliver. But this is truly nothing more than a filler placeholder show, and you know damn good and well it is. There was nothing of any significance that you really look forward to actually happening on this show. You might see some things advance, but not much. You know, you just look at this and you say... All right, well, maybe they'll give you a couple of really good matches and you hope that's enough to get you through tonight. And thank God you don't have to pay $50 for these anymore. I mean, that, that's the philosophy as much as anything else. Like the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. You got Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Sheamus, Jeff Hardy, and Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre's the champ. Like, you could easily argue that this match for the WWE Championship should be the curtain jerker. One of the two chamber matches on the show. I know you're going to say, well, maybe the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match will be, so that way they get some rest to face off against Roman later on. But fuck that. If I'm Roman, I'm sitting there saying, that match is going second to last because I'm the main event and I'm going on last because I have to defend the Universal title. And I'm number one and Drew is number two and he's lucky I even gave him that moniker. Like To me, that would be a much more Roman thing to do. Um, and put that fucking WWE Championship Chamber match in the curtain jerker spot. And that match is about how much interest people are going to have in this. And it's really weird. Like, the company is telling you what they think about Drew McIntyre. Yes, on the one hand, they try to prop him up. And on the one hand, they try to make him feel like a big deal. And they try to get behind him. But on the other hand, they're telling you it doesn't really work. That there is a clear-cut differentiation between him and Roman. And as a result... You look at this and you don't even know what the hell Drew's going to be doing come WrestleMania. Like, if you look at the people in this match, you'd assume Orton and Fiend are going to have a return match at Mania. You know, it seems like maybe you're going Kofi AJ. Is he going to really wrestle Jeff Hardy at WrestleMania? Probably not. You know, it looks like Jeff Hardy might not have anything to do. Is it really going to be Sheamus? Is that really where we're going? Or is it going to be somebody else we haven't even talked about yet? I almost hope to God it is. Because, man... Like, do you really view any of these guys as a credible, viable threat to take this title off of Drew? Are you secretly hoping deep down that you get a attempt to cash in by Miz? I think it would shake shit up a little bit. I don't even know. Yeah, not good. U.S. title triple threat match. Again, it's raw stuff, so I really don't care that much, but... You got Bobby Lashley defending against Keith Lee. Like, oh, you knew he was going to get put in a meaningless mid-card hell at some point. And Matt Riddle. Bro, 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 bro. As annoying as Vince Russo with none of the redeeming qualities. Like, I can't believe any of you find this Riddle ass hat appealing in any way, shape, or form. It's a freaking... Dollar Tree version of RVD. And he's lucky I'm even giving him that compliment. They really put it on. Bro, bro, bro. Watch as I kick off my flip-flops. Watch as I walk around with my stupid bare feet. Watch as I sit there and pose on camera with this stupid punch-me-in-the-face because I deserve it face. I better not have Bobby Lashley lose to Matt Riddle. Fuck that. And then the Raw Women's Championship. What are they doing now? Because Lacey got moo-mooed. She was supposed to wrestle Asuka here for the title, which you would assume would have potentially set up to her potentially winning the strap for so her and Charlotte could continue their thing off to WrestleMania. I'm assuming that match is off and may or may not have another plan here. Like, And here's, here's where it gets interesting for somebody like Lacey Evans is... You don't ever really want to shit on somebody for, you know, making a kid when they can financially support him, everything else. And, you know, it just, stuff happens sometimes and you don't think it's going to happen. You, you, who knows? Any number of things. 
but I'm sorry. Don't we have to give her at least a little bit of criticism for really stupid timing? Like, you're being positioned in a way that you're being associated with all the one of the true all-time legends in Ric Flair in a storyline with his daughter, which means that you know you're going to be in some type of at least somewhat featured spot at WrestleMania. You've been featured strongly the past several weeks on Raw. Like, this storyline, they're not going to just drop. Like, there's going to be a culmination at some point, and you go and get fucking pregnant? This is like Becky Lynch getting pregnant after all that time of being forced down everybody's throat as a goddamn man. I understand for ladies it can be a little more challenging because you can't sit there and say, well, then I'm never going to get pregnant because I'm afraid of, you know, ruining a push or whatever. But can't you time these things out a little bit better? I know it's a little easier said than done, but man, oh man. And then it makes me worry long term for WWE are they going to start backing off of some of these women? Or are they only going to push maybe lesbians because they're assuming that they're not going to get pregnant? I guess it sounds crash and harsh and asshole to say, and it is, but it's a question. Like, just really bad timing is what I'm trying to emphasize here. Good luck to them, you know, like having your baby, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't seem like ideal timing. You see, you just saw Brandy freaking do this on AEW. You're being built up towards something, then you just go and get pregnant. Like, why? if you know you're potentially trying to put a butt in the oven, why are you then trying to put yourself into a featured storyline? Whatever the case might be. So I don't know what they're doing with Asuka in this Raw Women's Championship. Like, maybe they're going to change course here, and they're going to have Charlotte go after it instead, and then Lacey and Rick cost her the match on Sunday. Be my assumption. Who the hell knows? Um, Stupid. The Women's Tag Team Championship, you got Sasha and Bianca are going to join together to face off against Nia and Shayna, which either means one of two things. Either you're going to have Sasha and Bianca actually win the straps because you want to use them as a plot device heading towards WrestleMania, or you're going to have them not win because you want to have friction or something go wrong, so that way you can use it as a plot device for WrestleMania. Um, you know, I understand the desire to make it a plot device for WrestleMania, you can always go right back to putting the straps on Nia and Shayna. So I don't really have a huge issue with Sasha and Bianca being put in this spot. Other than the fact, again, I want to emphasize, do you really think it's a good idea right before WrestleMania to put two of your featured attractions for this year's Mania, your biggest show of the year, in the ring with Nia Jax at the same time? Does that sound smart? Just saying. Ugh. So we'll see what happens there. SmackDown Elimination Chamber match. Hey, you look at this. And it looks like a mid-card chamber match. You got Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin. Like it looks like a bunch of mid-carders. That's what it looks like. That's a mid-carders better than others, obviously, but that's kind of sad. Like none of these feel like feature players. None of these feel like big-time deals. And when you get to this chamber match itself, like, what are you really trying to build towards here? Like, let's say you are going to push to have Kevin Owens win this. Do we really need a fourth Kevin Owens-Roman Reigns match at this point? No, the hell we don't. If you do Jey Uso now, if you did some type of lay down type of angle, like Jey wins it and then he faces off against his cousin again, and Roman tells him to do the job. Like, that could be interesting. Otherwise, I look at this and I'm like, sure, seems like it's built to have Kevin Owens win so he can face off against Roman again. And just has no appeal to me. Now, he and Roman have had some good matches. Yes, I will absolutely grant you that. When the Royal Rumble was, was the, the, the worst of the three by far. And it was still solid. It just wasn't as good as the previous two. But, you know... I almost would rather you not have to force the Tribal Chief to defend your elimination tape, but I understand. You gotta have him there. Um, you know, maybe to shut some people up, maybe have Daniel Bryan win, so that way he can face off against Roman. So at least you get a moment of that. Or hell, at this point, you might as well have Cesaro face off against Roman Reigns. Seriously. Because then... You're at least giving Cesaro a bit of a push and a bit of a spot. You'd have Seth Rollins come in and fuck him up. 
You know, like there's a lot of different things you could do. I could look at this and I wonder if Seth Rollins is going to attack somebody and take their place in this match. Could potentially be possible. Could potentially cost Cesaro. You get what I'm saying? Like, I look at this and while you seem to be indicating or pointing to Kevin Owens winning this match, I think the better option is probably Cesaro because at least it would be fresh. It would be different. You're not going to do anything with it for WrestleMania because that's not the end game. That's not the goal here. And you could use that as an excuse to involve Seth Rollins so you could launch Cesaro and Seth Rollins on their own road towards WrestleMania. As much as Seth Rollins is the rating slayer on SmackDown, when I look at it, like if he's going to be in a program with Cesaro, this is the perfect way to incorporate him, the perfect, excuse me, the perfect way to get him involved. Maybe even a little tip of the hat to the shield thing between Roman and Seth, you know, so... Like my prediction at this moment is they're either going to go do the pathetically predictable route and have Kevin Owens do it and win, or if they want to get a little more creative and you want to kind of follow up and reinforce some of the push you've been giving the guy recently, you have Cesaro win this Elimination Chamber match. And yes, you'll end up having him job out to Roman Reigns, but you're not taking the strap off of Roman right now anyway, so it doesn't matter. Would I rather have Kevin Owens lose to him for a fourth time or would I rather have Cesaro do it because of Seth Rollins interference or something like that? I know what my answer would be and it sure as fuck wouldn't be Kevin Owens. So you tell me, who would you have win the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match and how would you book that uh, subsequent Universal title match against Roman Reigns? Uh, what else do you see happening on this show? Do you think this show is actually going to be any good or not? Do you think this could be a pleasant surprise or do you think it'll be one gigantic, largely waste of time? Let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and you come back after Elimination Chamber on Sunday night so that way you can see my review of the show and its happenings. Yeah!